There are two main ways that we can account for our steel buckling uh, after yielding. Um, so you can see we have our uh, buckling stress uh, expression that we had from before. This is just an Euler buckling stress expression. Um, and it involves the uh, steel stiffness, um, E sub S, or and I'm, sub I'm labeling it E sub T. Uh, so the first thing, the first way we can uh, account for um, post yield steel buckling would be to um, change the stiffness based on the uh, stiffness shown in the plot. Um, so if we were to look at stiffnesses at a couple different times, we could have ET1 or as our uh, just elastic stiffness. Um, and then in our strain hardening region, we can have ET2, which is a, a greatly decreased stiffness, and we could continue to modify and decrease our stiffness as we go. So this is uh, kind of how the tangent modulate modulus method works is uh, we would find the um, stiffness uh, at a respective strain and then um, use that stiffness to find our, our critical stress. One of the disadvantages to the tangent modulus method is it treats the entire steel bar as uh, having the same um, stress and same strain on it, um, when in actuality that won't really be the case. Uh, so what we'll see is um, that our tangent modulus method is excessively conservative. This is why the uh, reduced modulus method may be a, a better method um, for accounting for our, our post-yield steel buckling. Um, so what the reduced modulus method takes into account is when we're loading a bar, um, so just an a, a bar in axial compression, uh, what will happen is this bar will uh, start to buckle. And when it starts to buckle, part of the bar will be loaded more. So this will be um, some portion of the bar will be loaded more and thus be um, further on our diagram and the other part will be uh, kind of unloaded and have a, a lower a lower stress so maybe you know come back elastic um, so what this will do is it'll change the stress distribution on our diagram uh, so we may have our stress at the top and stress at the bottom. Um, and what we'll see is if we uh, use the reduced modulus method, we'll see our um, reduced modulus uh, E sub R equaling th about three times our uh, E sub T. In nearly all situations, our reduced modulus method uh, will more accurately represent the uh, actual behavior of our reinforcement and thus is preferred.